questions I get asked a lot is why when you break up with a narcissist or when they break up with you, do they become obsessed with ruining your life? This video is going to look at the reasons why and how you can protect yourself. Welcome back to the Nurturing Case channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. I hope you get lots of value out of the channel. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do give me a click. For those of you who have already subscribed, huge thank you. Really do appreciate it. So today I want to look at why narcissists are so obsessed with ruining your life. It's one of the hardest things to come to terms with because they are relentless. They're obsessive about painting you as this awful person, they will go to extreme lengths to ensure that everybody sees you as the bad guy and then as the hero or the victim. Um, so they can ruin your job, they can ruin your relationship with your children, your friends and your family, all out of this desire to not be seen as being the problem within the relationship. When any relationship breaks down, we reflect on that, it's a batter, it batters our ego, we feel that rejection, but most of us, we go through the grief process and we come out the other side and we build ourselves stronger, we learn from the mistakes, we accept responsibility for our part in the relationship and we move on. But the narcissist isn't able to do that, primarily because they are completely unable to accept any responsibility for their own actions. So when the when a relationship ends and those all those cracks appear in that, that sense of self, then they have to do whatever they can to repair them. Otherwise they will collapse into a deep depression. So in order to repair those cracks, they have to deflect everything onto you. You are the reason the relationship broke down. You did you cheated on them, you have STIs, you are mentally ill, you lied, you stole from them. They will say you've done all of these things. They're actually, it's probably they're the ones that did all of those things, but they have to project that onto you because they cannot risk anybody seeing their true sense of self. They can't risk anybody realizing that actually they're the ones. Not this present as being incredibly egotistical, they're very self-centered, they are, they, they present as thinking that they're perfect, well actually it's all a big facade because inside they're very much aware of their own inadequacies, they're very, they're scared of being abandoned because they don't feel that they're worthy of anyone staying with them, they don't think anyone will really like them or love them for who they are because this is what they've experienced in their childhood so they just go through life reenacting that same trauma and so when a relationship breaks up they're plunged back into that feeling that they felt in childhood where they're abandoned where they're unworthy of the love and they have to protect themselves from that because they can't cope their emotions spiral and they will commit suicide because they cannot cope with feeling like that it's too painful for them and so they will do everything they can to build that up so that it's not them that's the problem they will protect themselves from falling into that level of pain by projecting all of those terrible behaviours onto you and they are obsessive about this because otherwise the narrative doesn't work. When they're, when they're talking to people, whether they're people that knew you or people or new people that have come into their lives, that we ask about how so and so or are you married or whatever and when they say, well, no, actually, I'm single, there has to be a story behind that. There has to be an excuse as to why they're not in a relationship. And it has to be because someone hurt them, someone ruined them, someone did something so terrible to them. That's why they're single. Not because they're, they're not looking for anyone or because they're quite happy on their own, but because I got hurt so badly, I'm the victim, and so 
that's why I'm single. Not that there's anything wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm great, actually. I don't know why I'm single, because I'm f fabulous. But, you know, I'm so hurt. So they can play that victim role so well. So this is what you'll find if you're co trying to co-parent. They'll probably go quiet for periods of time. They'll stay out of your life. But the second they get a new partner, the vitriol will come back because the new partners obviously asked some questions and they might have said, oh yes, I've got kids because they'll have used the kids to try and lure them in, make it out that they're super mum or they're super dad and use the kids to paint this picture of them in this wonderful light. The new person has said, well, where are these kids and how do you see them and all of that. So... They then have to paint you as this awful person who stopped them from seeing the kids, who's turned them against them, who's abusive. The new person will say, oh my God, that's terrible. We must try and rescue these children. And then they'll come back in all, I want 50-50 custody, la la la. The new girlfriend will hate your guts, think that you're terrible because they've believed all of those lies. And the narcissist obviously sits back thinking, yes. I am the hero and I am the victim. But they've become so obsessed with not being seen as, you know, being human, essentially, because we all make mistakes. And we should own those, we should own our mistakes and we should be, we should celebrate our flaws. It's what makes us unique. We can't, nobody is perfect. Noel Gallagher famously said, True perfection has to be imperfect. And I love that line because it's true. We can't be perfect. We were the human nature. Nature in itself was not built to be the um, definition of perfect. It was built to be unique. Every snowflake, every puppy, they're all unique. And that's what's so wonderful. But the narcissist doesn't see it like that because it... They see everything about them as being awful, unlovable, unworthy, inadequate. And so they can't celebrate who they are. So any slight crack in that veneer that they share with the world of being wonderful and being perfect, anything that threatens to ruin that, they will overreact by being over the top with their projection onto you or whoever else. And... So they they have to they have to do that they have to become obsessed with ruining your life because that fits the narrative that they're innocent. If if they if you hadn't done all those awful things, they wouldn't keep going on about it, would they? And it it wouldn't fit otherwise. If they just skulked away and forgot about it, they in their heads they would think people think that they they're the problem. So they have to go over the top in order to continue with this farce that they're the victim so how do you protect yourself well it is really hard it's really hard when they turn people against you where everywhere you go people are looking at you thinking you're this you're that and the other and generally feeling like a low a low person a low class citizen because someone else is saying that you're this all these awful things and the important thing is you can't change everyone's mind don't waste your energy changing everyone's mind instead focus on you Focus on being really secure in who you are, really confident in what you stand for. Um, because then, no matter what someone says about you, if you know who you are, if someone accused me of being aggressive, I know I'm not aggressive in the slightest, so accuse me of that. It makes no difference to me because I know the truth. I know that I'm not. So when you're confident, when you have that level of understanding who you are and the belief in who you are, other people's opinions of you don't matter as much. Obviously with children, we've discussed this in parental alienation videos, it's about giving them the strength to be very clear on who they are as well. Because when they're clear on who they are, they can see the contrast between you and the narcissist. So work on you, work on your self-confidence and accept that you cannot change other people's opinions. Don't waste your energy running around trying to follow up, say, what's he said about me? Well, that's not true. This is what really happened. Because actually, one, don't give them the satisfaction of knowing that you're bother that they're bothering you. But also, you end up looking a little bit crazy when you're doing that anyway. So 
just protect your integrity, keep, maintain your dignity and just know that the truth will come out. The truth always comes out. Regardless of how well the narcissist thinks they've hidden it, the truth will come out. So if you're watching this narcissist, which I know you do, the truth will come out. So just be secure in that knowledge that it's going to come out and just be confident with who you are and ensure that all your behaviours reflect who you truly are. So that will make all the lies seem even more glaringly obvious that they are lies. Obviously, if you're struggling with any of this, please do reach out. You can contact me at inquiries at the nurturingcoach.co.uk. Do like, comment and share. It does help um, other people when we share our experiences. And like I say, if you haven't had a chance, please do subscribe. It really does help. Do take care of yourselves and I look forward to seeing